All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Moore, and this is a presentation on marketing segmentation and specifically on segmentation of the chewing gum industry. Before we begin the presentation, I wanted to give you just a brief overview of the presentation. And that is this presentation is for a marketing management course for the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And this was an assignment for homework. Uh, basically, this presentation is brief. It is 10 slides in length. And to give you an idea of the content of the presentation, first we'll cover what is marketing segmentation. Uh, I thought it was right just to give a brief definition of market segmentation before we begin. Second, we'll cover the product choice, which was the product that I chose for this project. And as you can tell already, that is chewing gum. Third, I will review a segmentation scheme that I put together. And this is very similar to one that we put together in class. It follows the same structure. Fourth, I'd like to show you some specific examples of the segmentation scheme. And that's really, I think, the fun part of the presentation where you get to see the actual examples of each specific segment. And last, we'll end with a brief summary of the presentation. All right, so first let's get started with a brief definition of what is marketing segmentation. And I'm not a big fan of lengthy book definitions, so what I try to do here is, is give this to you in a very simple format. Uh, basically, if you look at what is marketing segmentation, it is a strategy or an act that a company takes to divide the market into well-defined slices or segments. And when I think of slices, I think about pizza. Uh, <laughs> I hope you probably thought about the same thing. But basically, each well-defined slice is basically a grouping of consumers who share the same needs and wants. Companies determine how they want to cut their own pizza, right? They determine the slices in many different ways. So they can do that by consumer behavior, by geographics, or by demographics. And you'll see here in just a bit how I decided to slice up the chewing gum industry. And the ultimate goal of market segmentation is basically for a company to view the slices and strategize two things. First, that would be to which slices they will market to. And second, how they will market to each particular slice. The product choice that I made was chewing gum. And why I chose this, I wanted to go through several different examples as far as why I chose this product. First, it's a very simple product. It's very easy to relate to. And I think a lot of us can relate to this grocery store uh, that you see here in the first bullet and life stages specifically. So when you think about chewing gum and the grocery store, this is probably what you think of. At least it's what I think of. And specifically relating to life stages Think about when you've gone to the grocery store when you were a lot younger, perhaps when you were a small child, and the differences that that checkout aisle when what you looked at regarding chewing gum was compared to what you go through the line now and look at as an adult. So it's very easy to relate to, and that is because mostly everyone has used this product. So you're obviously familiar with the product. This chewing gum product, the differences in this particular market are very easy to see. You can look at the labeling, look at the fonts, the imagery, what's said on the package, and see how they're marketing to each individual market segment or slice. And last, and I think most importantly as well, it's a pretty fun topic. Um, and I'm a true believer that people learn when they're having fun. So let's have some fun and talk about market segmentation relating to chewing gum. All right, so here's a brief example of a segmentation scheme, and this is one that I came up with myself. Uh, it follows the format of, a, of the analysis that we did in class, basically breaking the matrix into three columns, that of benefit, name, and demographic. So first, let's talk about the healthy teeth benefit, which I named cosmetics. 
And that demographic would specifically be women, mothers, or adults. Second segment that I've come up with is the benefit of bad breath, or perhaps the benefit of good breath <laughs> would be another way to word it. I've named those the group the, or that group rather the unpleasants, and that demographic would be adults young to old. Uh, the, the third segment that I came up with was the benefit of flavor, and that name I gave to the group is sugarheads, and the demographic would be tweens or those not yet but close to becoming teenagers and teenagers themselves. Fourth segment, the fun benefit, and this is my favorite, of course. Uh, the name there would be kids and kids at heart, and the demographic is children. The fifth that I came up with is the nostalgic benefit, and I've named those segment, or that segment rather, the old timers, and the demographic there would be baby boomers or the kids of baby boomers, and I'll explain that when we get into the specific uh, examples of chewing gum. The last benefit, the last segment that I came up with is the medicinal benefit, and I've named that group the specialty shoppers, and that demographic would be for those seeking a specialty gum. Uh, two examples that I came up with were smokers and dry mouth. So let's move on. I've got four slides coming up regarding specific examples I chose four specific groups out of the segmentation scheme that you just saw, and I want to give you some specific illustrations or pictures of different products that I've found for each segment. So the first segment that we'll look at is the cosmetic segment. And if you recall, the benefit of this group was healthy teeth, and the demographic here is adults. Uh, specifically, I would argue that it would be women and mothers is, is a specific marketing segment. And here are some images and examples of products that would be under the cosmetics category, all of which are Trident brand gum. You can see in the center here, this picture here, uh, you've got extra care gum that strengthens your teeth. In the upper right, you've got Trident tooth whitening gum. Sugarless gum is written on the package. And in the lower right, you can see Trident gum. And, and here's to really highlight the healthy teeth benefit, good for your teeth, and sugarless gum. So that's the first example to the cosmetic segment. Specific example number two, and, and I went out of order a little bit here, but I, I wanted to build up to my favorite, which is the last example uh, that we'll end the presentation with. Uh, but sp specific example number two are the specialty shoppers. If you recall, the benefit of this group are, is a medicinal benefit, and the demographic would be smokers or those with dry mouth. And here are two specific examples of this product. Uh, you can see on the left here the Nicorette gum, those for uh, that particular brand for those trying to stop smoking. And on the right is the Biotene dry mouth gum. Let's move on to the third example, which I've classed the old timers group. I hope I'm not <laughs> offending anyone here because I, I guess I fall into this in some category. Uh, the benefit of this is a nostalgic benefit. And the demographic is baby boomers or kids of baby boomers. So if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I tried to explain to you or, or said I would explain this. And here is the explanation. Uh, you look at some specific examples of this gum, uh, you see Wrigley's Double Mint Gum, uh, Double Your Pleasure with Double Mint Gum, probably most of you remember that, Juicy Fruit, Clove Gum, Big Red. Uh, I say baby boomers because I, I remember my parents and my grandparents carrying this gum uh, specifically, and if I am the child of a baby boomer, which I am, if I wanted gum as a child, this is what I would get. So there are still times where I will purchase this gum just because I remember and desire the taste of this specific gum. Last example, and this is my favorite. I tried to save the favorite for last. This is the kids and kids at heart segment. And this is really the one where I uh, particularly fall. Uh, the benefit, if you recall, is fun. 
and the demographic is children, or again, those that think they're children, which I guess I could call myself that at times. Here are some specific examples of this segment. Uh, you can see here the double bubble gum or the old Bazooka Joes as well with some of the comic strips in it. Uh, on the lower left here, Bubblicious. This is probably one that's very well recognized uh, amongst the children market segment. Newly branded Bazooka Joe bubble gum. And then one of my favorites as a child, and, and still now I'll purchase this, <laughs> is Big League Chew bubble gum. And you probably recall that as well. So those are four specific examples, and that ends this brief presentation on marketing segmentation of the chewing gum industry. When I provide a presentation, I always like to end where I begin, and we will end with a brief summary of the presentation, just a quick recap of what we, were, what we have reviewed together. Uh, the first thing we did was go through a brief example of marketing segmentation. Again, the simple, simple definition is how a company will slice up or divide into consumer group segments. Secondly, I reviewed my product choice, which was chewing gum, and went over some reasons why I chose that particular product. Uh, third, we went through the segmentation scheme matrix, where I was able to divide the chewing gum industry into six specific market segments. I followed that up with four specific examples of those segmentation schemes, giving you different examples and different products, and reviewing some of the packaging features as well of those products. And that is all. So this concludes the brief presentation on marketing segmentation. I hope you've enjoyed what we, re what we have reviewed here today together. I thank you for your time and your interest, and most importantly, happy chewing to everyone. Take care. Thanks.